hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Let's answer some fashion questions, starting with this one. What is a color that never goes out of trend? Okay, let's get this out of the way. Black, the color black. Uh, here's, here's my big qualifier for the color black. In order to wear an all black outfit that doesn't make you look like you are like coming back from some kind of job is really, really difficult. I own a black suit and it's really, really hard to style that in a way where I do not look like I'm a waiter. Like in this photo, I like have to wear it with tabby boots or else I just, people are like gonna be like asking me where the bathroom is. I mean, there was a super long period of time where everyone was talking about the fact that like indigo is never going to go out of style and here we are in an era where jeans kind of just don't make sense hardly ever. Says the guy literally wearing jeans, but they're not, they're not like indigo jeans. So that might speak to the fact that they're kind of inevitably are always going to be these cycles of some kind. And because black is so immune from that cycle, it ends up becoming a thing where it's like, well, we don't really have like a uniform here at work, but you do need to wear all black. And in sort of the opposite way, white sort of never goes out of style for women's wear. I mean, ladies, please tell me if, if I'm missing something here. For women's wear, oftentimes, all white looks tend to have kind of a the Hamptons look to them. And then for guys, white just, I mean, like inevitably, I'm just, I'm gonna spill some ketchup on it or something. So I guess like the, the real answer to this question is like black is kind of the, ooh, we have a train. I would take you outside to go look at the train, but um, can you hear it? I would take you outside to go look at it, but it is uh, raining super hard today and I do not want to get wet. So I guess the real answer to this question is that black is the one color that doesn't ever really go out of fashion. You just have to figure out how to navigate a black outfit so that it actually looks unique and cool. This other question wasn't really a question. It was just someone saying like, I appreciate you not gatekeeping information about fashion. And I just wanna talk about gatekeeping for a second here. People who gatekeep information about fashion or really anything usually just don't know a lot about the thing that they're gatekeeping. If you have ever reached out to a academic and you ask them for information about something, you will never get them to stop trying to give you more information about the thing. You know why? Because they actually know a lot about it. But if someone is just sort of like making one TikTok where they're like, when it comes to number nine, a lot of y'all are asking the wrong questions. Number nine is more of like a feeling. Takahiro Miyashita actually didn't even want to like fucking... Um, Y'all are just like in this for the clout, but really you don't know much about number nine, but I do. I know a lot about number nine. You can just rest completely a fucking sure that no, none of those guys actually know anything about this shit. Because the weird thing about gatekeeping is that if you act like that, then you can't get access to more information. Like I, I have an incredibly like open door policy with my Instagram DMs. I'm worse about it now because I just have more people in my DMs, but like I love just like talking to other fashion enthusiasts about clothes because I end up learning a lot that way. If you're really open about stuff that you don't understand and that you don't know about, then other people can kind of come in and just help you fill stuff in. People who gatekeep, I mean, I, I guess they don't suck because they're just sort of sitting there with like their 14 facts that they have and they're like, these are my facts and don't you dare try to ask me about my facts or I'm gonna invoice you. If somebody is acting gatekeepy at you, just don't worry about it, it's fine. Go hang out with other people. This is a fantastic follow-up question to that. Why do you think a lot of fashion communities are so negative towards one another? I have no idea. I honestly can't stand people who are just like compulsively negative online. It like really irritates me, which is why my Discord has uh, literally none of that. Like in the whole history of the Discord, we, we really have had maybe two problems with someone like compulsively shit talking at somebody and those problems were both handled and, and they're not there anymore. It is the greatest place on the internet. You should go join the Patreon so you can get on that Discord server. It's the best. And we even have a student tier. Like if you can't afford to give a lot of money, we have a student tier that's super, super cheap. It's literally the best. I don't even know what else I would say about it. Okay, so this person asked this question, why are runway shows so boring? And then they said, I can go in depth over DM, which actually did help to clarify what specifically they were talking about. I think I can answer this question now. Fashion shows are boring for a couple of different reasons. One is that ultimately it's part of a trade show. It's part of an industry trade show because it's industry people talking to other industry people and trying to get them to spend money. Now fashion, because 
we're the best. And we're also just a pretty extra weird group of people. We have also kind of turned it into an art form. Not kinda, it is an art form at this point. But there is that mix of it being an art form, but also like it, it is an industry trade show. And so there has to be a little bit of a balance there. This person went on to say like, for couture shows, for example, if you're trying to sell me a vision, why does that have to be constrained to being on a runway? That's a super good question. And I think that's just because the industry moves very slowly. The pandemic kind of forced a lot of brands to go outside of the box. And there were some really, really successful examples of brands going outside the box of a normal runway show. The best one is the uh, Swalk, S-W-A-L-K, sealed with a loving kiss. Swalk. Uh, Margiela released two of these. Outstanding. They're, they're short films that are about the process of designing a collection. There are parts of it that are just like editorial where things are just kind of swirling around and it's beautiful like imagery stuff and they are not in any way contained to just a normal runway show. It's, it's about process and it's about like the full embracing of the sometimes campy, sometimes kind of scary vision of what that collection is about. There are other brands that go way outside of the box in a really great way and didn't need a pandemic to get there. Like uh, Acronym is the most like brazenly obvious example of a brand that said, we do not need runway shows. These are completely pointless. We're just gonna do something else. So I think some of it is just due to the fact that the industry is very slow to embrace change. And a lot of people in the industry, myself included, have really affectionate feelings towards the format of the runway because it's such a tightly constrained form that it's resulted in some really exciting kick flips that can happen. It's kind of like the difference between like someone doing a huge gym, excuse me. It's kind of like the difference between someone doing a massive gymnastic set like out on an open mat versus someone who's managed to do a full backflip in a really tight broom closet. This is undeniably awesome and super impressive, but like doing a backflip in this, it's like, how, how would you even do that? And so when it does happen on occasion, it's just like, we're just like freaking out. And ultimately, I, I think that part of why they do seem a little bit boring is because it's it's like listening to dance music on your phone in bed. That, that music is meant to be listened to in a club surrounded by hundreds of other people on massive sound systems. It's not meant to be listened to in that way. In the same way, fashion is not meant to exclusively be taken in as just like a video that you're watching on your phone in bed. We do a lot of things on our phones in bed. Part of that experience is meant to be going to the store or trying it on in some very rare cases, being able to buy the stuff and make it a part of your life. You, you owning that piece of clothing is part of the process of taking in that art. Now, of course, for every brand that you like and every runway show that you're impressed with, you cannot take that into your life. And so some of it is limited to just being on the screen or just being in person if you're very lucky. Everything, everything about the process of fashion is meant to be the art form. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you for being so thorough. Do you own Logic Pro and want to share it with me? I'm a young music producer. I do not own Logic Pro. Keep crushing it with those beats, homie. This is incredible, I love this question. What are some avenues in fashion that are ripe for disruption in your opinion? In a recent episode, we talked about how women's shoulder design kind of saved the fashion industry and laid down the blueprint that's now starting to bleed over into menswear. There are a lot of men who are starting to kind of open their minds up to the idea of I think I do want to try having a skirt and actually this dress does kind of look good on me. The idea of incorporating very feminine, traditionally feminine items of clothing into the closets of men, that is something that is becoming more of a standard now. What fashion designers are doing with that and the place where the disruption is happening is that menswear is developing its own grammar, its own way of thinking about those those designs that have been done exactly the same way in women's wear for a very, very long time. But I'm really excited to see how men's wear develops its own, uh, the term that I've always come back to is grammar. The, how men's wear develops its own grammar for very stereotypically feminine, traditionally feminine items of clothing. Great question. Who do you think are the more interesting slash creative fashion writers? Okay, so to start that off, we gotta clear up a huge misconception. Virgil Abloh is one of the best fashion writers of the current generation. The, the fashion writing that he gave everyone 
for free was outstanding. If you have not read the show notes that Virgil left, they're incredible. All the ones at Louis Vuitton, they're all like books. I will link that down in the description. Hopefully I remember to do that. Huge shout out to Eugene Rabkin, who uh, writes, I think mostly for High Snob. Uh, Eugene Rabkin is an incredible fashion writer and fashion critic kind of always has been sort of one of my like early heroes, this man. Vanessa Friedman is one of the only people that I trust to give me fashion news update style articles. Um, uh, there's just so much just copy paste, copy paste. Vanessa Friedman will give you the best context for what you're looking at of anybody that I've ever read. Rachel Seville Tashjian is an outstanding writer. She used to be a staff writer for GQ. Pretty much anything that's fashion related written, written by Rachel Seville Tashjian is great. So worth reading. AO, the Fashion Archive, a fantastic journalist and all of his written pieces have been super, super good. I assume that everyone who watches this also watches AO. Surely you must. If you don't, you should. Tim Blanks, his writing is all fantastic, but the place where he really shines is when he's doing interviews with designers. He, he is one of the best question askers in fashion. As far as like reviews for fashion shows, um, I, I consistently find that Sarah Mower is pretty good at what she does. It's difficult because someone who is in that position is writing so many reviews per season that it becomes really difficult to make a single review thought-provoking. Sarah Mower pulls that off almost every single time. Also, I mean, huge shouts out to academic writers like Kat Debeau. Uh, Kat is the director of the MoMU in Antwerp, which is the best fashion museum in the world. Kat has also written a number of books about fashion and they are unbelievable. The, the number one sin that fashion writers can commit, in my opinion, is that they say something offhand and they leave you, the reader, asking the question, wait, can you give me an example of what you mean by that? Kat Debeau, you will never have that problem one time with this woman. She is an outstanding writer. She's incredibly thorough. I'll also give a huge shout out to Francesca Granada, who is a high level academic writing about fashion and she does whew, such good work. It's, it's great. I have her book, Experimental Fashion, and um, I mean, again, very like in-depth, high-level academic writing, but it is outstanding. Um, there's also Caroline Evans who wrote uh, maybe one of the best fashion theory books of all time, Fashion at the Edge. Professor Evans does an outstanding job, uh, very, very thorough, and she's able to pull in lots of different examples that are able to all come together and help make a wider point about culture and fashion, which is a really hard thing to do. I think that's, oh, you know what? If, if you really want something that's just like, oh, this was incredibly fun to read, you need to pick up Dressed by Shahid Jabari. This is not a novel, like it's not like a story about people and just sort of like is about clothes a whole bunch. This is just a book about clothes, but it is beautifully poetically written and it is such a joy to read. If you can, get the audiobook because Professor Bari reads it herself and she has an outstanding reading voice. I've recommended this book before. It's well worth checking out. I uh, went into way too much detail answering this question, but uh, yeah, I'm really passionate about fashion writing. This is a pretty good one. What is the role of a fashion designer? I want to be super duper clear about this. The role of a fashion designer is whatever they decide their role is. Any attempt on our side, the viewer's side, any attempt on our side to try to establish some kind of definition that they need to then meet with their work is never going to result in good cultural dialogue, ever. I have a friend who's one of the most like expansive thinkers that I know who was in a museum with me and we were looking at a piece, neither of us liked the piece, and he gave me this incredible monologue that I'm gonna try to summarize here. He said, it's not helpful to ask the question, what is art? And then to have this big old conversation like, well, art should be like, blah, blah. no, I think that art should be pretty. I think art should have a moral at the end of it. I think art should be teal. I've always liked teal art. I think that teal art is probably the way that art should be. No. What he said is that the really interesting thing happens is when an artist takes a piece and puts it into a gallery or a museum, because at that point, once it's in there, it is art. There's no conversation to be had about that. What's interesting though, is that when the artist puts that thing in that space, it is then just a truth statement that what you are looking at is art. And then you have to wrestle with that truth statement of what I'm looking at is already art. In a similar way, it is always going to be best for us as the viewers 
to look at what the goals of the fashion designer already are. I mean, frankly, y'all, if we have Rei Kawakubo doing stuff like this, it's kind of anything goes. Like, Rei Kawakubo does stuff like this. Deep Tea Barth has a, a jacket that is <laughs> made of glass, broken glass, and like can't be worn. Cerule Rect has shoes that you literally can't stand up in or they'll send you to the hospital. Like, there are so many things in fashion design. It has been well established that fashion design can just literally be anything. That technically is a bikini. Like, if that wasn't on a person on a runway, if I just showed you that as an object in a room and was like, what is this? There's no way you'd look at me and say, it's a bikini top. I have have to black it out, but it's it's that Chanel bikini top, that one Chanel bikini top. You know which one I'm talking about. It is always going to be better for us as the viewers to look at the art, the fashion, and to say, what goals does this thing have for itself? What goals has the designer laid out for themselves? And then ask, do they meet those goals well? Because anything can be art, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good art. And what makes good art is not, it has nothing to do with your preferences or how useful it is for your own life. Who would wear that? That is not a relevant question. What is a relevant question is, what is this designer trying to do? And then, did they do that thing well? Was it challenging? Was there parts of this that were unexpected? Did I have my personal beliefs challenged about that in some way? Did I learn something from this? Can I not stop thinking about it? Those are the most relevant questions. My friends, I love you so much. Go join that Patreon. Get on there with a ton of other people that just care about fashion a whole bunch. It, it is a party and it's super welcoming. Everyone is really friendly. Come on there, ask super basic questions. People will be overjoyed to help you come to a better understanding about that stuff. And come on there and share stuff that you know too. Like if you think something is like really cool looking, post it in our Inspo Picks pa page. Inspo Picks page. Love you all a lot. Thanks so much for giving me your time. I don't take that for granted. It means a lot to me. Talk to you next week. See ya.